Hello everyone, welcome to Geography IGCSE code 0460. Uh, it's a pretty morning here in Chigali. I hope everyone is doing fine wherever you are. Uh, we're going to be looking at our section C topics in this series and uh, today we're starting with the topic of industry. So I want you to think about any place that you could have gone to that has an industry or that where they produce uh, goods and then you will have a rough idea of what industry is. So we're going to look at a series of key terms and of course number one is industry. So what is an industry or what is industry as a term? Is the work and process involved in collecting raw materials very important there collecting raw materials and transforming them into finished products so what are raw materials these are items or products that we use to manufacture or to produce finished goods we have examples like cotton we have uh, fish we have uh, uh, iron ore among others and then the word transforming means turning something into something new something else so when a raw material is turned into finished products that is uh, manufacturing but the term industry involves even the process of collecting those raw materials term number two industrialization you've had this term and you've had uh, phrases like uh, the u.s is highly industrialized so what does it mean it means that the u.s has increased its production of finished goods and provision of services so this is a typical uh, characteristic of uh, medcs uh, the next term is manufacturing and this means uh, like i already mentioned the transformation of raw materials into finished products and the last right there is factory so you probably could have worked in a building during one of your field work studies a building where they are producing some kinds of goods and uh, definitely this is what factory is all about so it is simply a building or a group of buildings where goods are manufactured or assembled now there is a new key term right there assembled what this means is uh, putting different parts together to form one finished product we will look at some details about assembling later on in the topic so classification of industries uh, we have basically around uh, four uh, classification of industries those are the main ones so we have the number one which is primary industries uh, what this does is uh, it involves the extraction of raw materials from their natural existence we have our sectors like mining agriculture fishing forestry our etc so that is primary industry so you will also have at the back of your mind that our most ledcs are based on the primary sector and uh, much of them are looking at agriculture as their main source of national income number two in the classification we have the secondary industries and this is where this topic is mainly going to concentrate uh, these are industries that process raw materials into finished products for example food processing industries so what these do is uh, they get raw materials from the primary sector and they process them into finished products i'll give you an example uh, food processing industries uh, for example you get uh, you get milk from agriculture and you make cheese or yogurt or any other dairy products so that is food processing industries or you get wheat and other things you put them together and produce bread that is food processing so that is secondary industry we take a look at number three tertiary industries uh, these basically provide services for example transport and banking and then number four which is called quaternary industries uh, these also provide services but this time this service is in form of information uh, we have examples such as consultancy farms ict farms and research companies these are called quaternary industries the service is a uh, basically information uh, we're going to have uh, an activity here so you're going to take a look at a series of pictures and you correspond
respond to them to the right type of industry so you will come back to the video later and look at these pictures again and then um, be able to tell which type of industry each picture belongs so this is picture number one picture number two picture number three picture number four picture number five number six number seven number eight and that is it so uh, like i said this topic is going to concentrate much on secondary industries so let's take a look at our at uh, the different parts of secondary industries uh, so secondary industry is divided into uh, we have that term heavy industry so like the name suggests heavy industry so you can think about industries that produce very large and heavy uh, finished goods so by description this is an industry that uses large sums of capital and heavy machines to produce either materials uh, these materials of course could be things that can be used to produce other goods we have examples like steel uh, then uh, we also have large goods so these industries produce large goods like I mentioned such as ships uh, we have trains vehicles planes among others on a very large scale so those are heavy industries uh, next is light industry which is pretty the opposite of heavy industries uh, so these are industries that manufacture small or light goods uh, of course they use uh, machines as well and also employ people they could be many they could be few so examples we have food processing industries textile industries oil refining and energy production okay so we have terms right here processing industries and then assembling industries this is no longer a new term we have looked at it before so let's take a look at the distinction between these two processing industries these are industries which directly process or transform raw materials into finished products for example iron and steel industry so our uh, iron and steel industry uses a raw material that we call iron ore from the primary sector through mining and they transform this iron ore into iron and steel uh, you could have examples of iron sheets or metallic bars among other things okay let's take a look at assembly industries these are already mentioned that these are industries that put together parts of uh, and components are made from elsewhere to produce finished products such as cars computers and uh, phones uh, in rwanda we recently got a new industry that puts together different parts of cars made in germany to produce or to make a complete car these are Volkswagen cars i'm sure most of you have looked at them uh, we have computers now most of us uh, most of you know about Apple computers uh, like Mac Air Pro and uh, now these computers are made in the US but uh, most of the parts that make these computers are made in China and then we have phones I uh, will also give you an example of Mara phones which is a new industry in Rwanda making uh, putting together different parts made from China to make one complete phone these are actually beautiful smartphones so let's take a look at industry as a system now those of you who do computer you probably know what a system must contain uh, so it has three things uh, we have inputs uh, processes and outputs so let's take a look at the first one inputs now in an industry inputs uh, we can basically look at the most important which is raw materials now the we have machines now these machines use electricity uh, to produce uh, goods and these machines are some of them are run by computer which computer must be run by man so this is manpower or labor now machines also need water to cool down or even as raw material so number two we have processes and of course this involves a series of activities that are done in an industry to produce uh, finished uh, goods uh, we have examples of such activities uh, production branding packaging or uh, some other industries could in 
some other industries could involve activities such as washing among other things so that is that is a system and then it has uh, outputs for every system there must be output so in an industry we look at finished goods as one of the most important uh, outputs uh, we have bread for example we have cars and then other outputs could include profit or loss a uh, byproduct now byproduct this may sound pretty new for some of you so a byproduct is any product from the industry which could be a remnant of the finished product but which still has some purpose or it can be used to do something else for example we have in coffee processing industries we have coffee husks uh, as byproducts which can be used to produce um, fertilizers or which can be used as fertilizers in agriculture in sugar processing industries we have uh, things like bagasse uh, these are the remainders of sugarcane after squeezing out the juice and these can be used to produce electricity so that those are called byproducts and then we have finally waste products these have no purpose at all so they are waste products and therefore they are thrown away we also have customer feedback as an output uh, we have an exercise here that we're going to do so there is a picture or an insert right after this uh, which is a photograph of a sugar refinery uh, which is a processing industry so we have a series of questions right there that you're going to answer and we will be able to look at the answers later uh, that is the picture of the sugar refinery domino sugars so take a look at it and answer the questions that have been shown uh, then number two we have a picture an illustration of uh, an industry right there so basically this is a uh, an assembly industry uh, you can see vehicles so you're going to take a look at it and answer the questions that follow and I will be able to look at the answers later uh, there's another activity uh, for a confectioner industry list its inputs processes and uh, outputs so think about the confectioner industry for those of you who may not know what confectioner industries are these are industries that produce uh, products such as bread and biscuits and then uh, we have another question define the following so um, I think you're going to do a lot of some research and find out what these words mean these are high-tech industries then we have food loose industries industrial agglomeration and industrial inertia you will be able to post me the answers and i will be able to mark them so we have further classification of industries we have large-scale industries uh, previously we saw heavy industries so this is not so much different from the other so this is uh, industries that operate uh, from large size plants they use uh, large machines to produce large size products and they employ a great deal of workers we have an example of Boeing aircraft factory in Washington in USA now they say that this building where the Boeing aircraft factory is um, is the largest in the, uh, the largest building on earth are uh, in terms of the surface area it occupies not in terms of the of height uh, let's look at this small scale industries now of course these these are the same as uh, light industries like we already mentioned they operate from small size plants and they use less machines to produce goods on a small scale while employing few workers so we have something else called market oriented industries we all know what the market is this is a place where goods or services are sold Excuse me. so market oriented industries uh, these are industries that are located near the market for the for the products for example food processing industries so foods of course as you can uh, you can tell these are they, they, they are not able to last for long so they need to be produced nearer to the source of raw materials so that they can be sold immediately uh, 
we have another type which is called raw material oriented industries so raw materials we already know what this is so definitely these are industries that are located near the source of raw materials for example iron and steel industry so i want you to think of the reason why these industries must be located nearer to the source of raw material now i'll just give you one a quick one that uh this in most cases the raw materials are very heavy and they need they would require a lot of they involve a lot of transport costs and therefore the manufacturers or the owners of the company would think of reducing costs of transporting raw materials and instead establish the factory nearer the source of raw material. So we have capital intensive uh, industries, the word capital there. So it means that these industries uh, use more machines than people in their production uh, process. So we have car assembly industries. Most of the time, the machines are run by a few people and a lot of work is being done. The opposite of this is labor intensive industries. And of course, these are industries that use more human labor than machines to produce their finished products. Um, we have national industries or companies. The word national means uh, within a country, of course. So these are industries that produce goods in only one country. For example, if an industry is a random company and does not have any branches anywhere else in the world, so that is a national company. Another one is transnational industry or company. We will look at something called TNCs later. So these are industries that are that produce on a large scale and they manufacture goods in more than two countries or more than one country. So we have examples of industries or companies like Shell, like Nike. These operate in almost very many countries in the world. So that brings us to the end of part one of this topic. Uh, subscribe so that you can be able to follow the subsequent topics.